Would you give the Lord a hang up of praise right now and thank him all across this building. Oh, in the presence of the Lord that is here, praise him. In the presence of the Lord that is here, worship him. Oh, Lord, we love you today. We praise you today. We honor you today. Your people, God, exalt your name this morning. Your people, lift your name up this morning. We praise you today. We praise you today. The presence of God is here right now. The touch of the Lord is in this house right now. Your praise and worship has brought angels into this house right now. Would you raise your hands before we read our text today and just thank him for what you feel in the house of the Lord this morning. The Lord is already touching hearts. The Lord is already touching minds and spirits today. We love you, almighty God, and I thank you. I thank you for the angels of the Lord that's in this house. I thank you for the touch of God that's ever present in this house. Lord, I thank you for how you're reaching into the heart and mind and spirit of every individual today, almighty God, and you're touching, you're ministering, you're strengthening, you're bringing peace and comfort today in the name of the Lord. I thank you for it today, almighty God. I praise your name. The atmosphere is ready. The word of the Lord this morning, I want you to grab your Bibles today. Amen. I want to dismiss our junior high, senior high class we love. All of our young people, as they're exiting, would you give them a great big hand and let them know you love them. Let them know you appreciate them this morning. I'm going to be very transparent with you today to let you know that all week long, I have had a tremendous, tremendous burden for this service, both in the 10 o'clock hour and the 11 o'clock hour, and I believe the Lord has given me a word for both services. I'm thankful for a word that we can receive from the Lord in the day and hour that we're living in. How many is thankful that you can receive a word from God, that our God is alive and well and desires to speak to the people of the Lord? So very, very thankful. And so I ask you to be in prayer throughout the service, throughout the delivery of the word of God today, that God would do the work that only he can do. I'm reminded of the scripture that says, it's not by might nor by power. It's not in our giftings and talents and abilities but it's by His Spirit. So I pray the Spirit of the Lord to rest upon us. Are you ready for the Word today? Are you ready for the Word? Amen. Do you love the Word of God? I believe you do. Father, I love you today. He shut up. Would you raise your hands and thank Him right now? Lord, your people are here today to receive from you. Lord, your people are here today to worship, and Lord, they've come today in spite of every situation and circumstance in their life, and Lord, they trust you, and Lord, I pray that you would minister in the name of the Lord, in the name of the Lord, in the name of the Lord, in the name of the Lord. Luke chapter 17, pray for my throat today, been battling with a cold. Lord will help us. Luke chapter 17. I want to draw your attention to a very familiar portion of scripture. I read this once again a couple weeks ago and I could not get away from this text and the Lord prompted me beginning part of this week to deliver this word to you. Luke chapter 17. Luke chapter 17. Brother Mr. Withrow, so good to see you. We love you. Amen. Something just happens when you walk into the presence of the Lord. You bring God with you. Amen. Don't you love and appreciate, brother and sister Withrow? They're mighty, mighty people of God. Thank God for them. Luke chapter 17, beginning with verse 11. If you're ready, shout amen. amen. The Bible says, and it came to pass. As he went, everyone shout, as he went. Referring to Jesus to Jerusalem, that he passed through the midst of Samaria and Galilee. And as he entered into a certain village, there met him ten men that were lepers, which stood afar off. And they lifted up their voices. Everyone shout, they lifted up their voices. And they said or cried unto Jesus, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. And the Bible says, and when Jesus saw them, he said to them, go show yourselves unto the priests. And it came to pass that as they went, they were cleansed. Everyone shout cleansed. Important to understand that. 
And one of them, only one, out of the ten, the Bible says, when he saw that he was healed or that he was cleansed, turned back and with a loud voice glorified God and fell down on his face at his feet, giving him thanks, and he was a Samaritan. And Jesus answering said, Where were there not ten cleansed, but where are the nine? There are not found that return to give glory to God, save this stranger. And he said unto him, Arise, go thy way, thy faith hath made thee whole. Notice they went away cleansed. But when the man came back to give praise and glory to God, the word of God says he left whole. I want to preach you on this thought this morning for the next few moments that I have with you, this 10 o'clock hour. Left with a change left with a change would you lay your Bibles down would you raise your hands right now and let's thank God for his word and thank him for the power and the anointing that's in the word of God Lord Jesus I come before you right now in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth and I give you praise and glory and honor this hour for God you alone are worthy to be praised and Lord we step into this pulpit humbly and God asking for a divine anointing to set upon the word of God, a divine anointing to set upon my mind, my spirit, my tongue, my lips of clay, that I may deliver the word of God to the people of God that love you with all of their heart, soul, mind, and strength. I pray that, God, you would help us to deliver this word that, that you have given to us in the manner that you so see fit. And I pray that it would activate the spirit of God. It would, it would activate apostolic ministry, power, and anointing in this house. I thank you for it now in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. I thank you for what you're going to do through the preaching of the word of God. In the name of the Lord, I give you praise and glory and honor. In Jesus' name we pray. One more time, would you put your hands together? That's it, clap your hands. The Bible says, oh, clap your hands, all ye people, and shout unto God with a voice of triumph. And so as you clap your hands, now why don't you raise your voice and just give God praise right now. The Bible says, let everything that hath breath, let everything that hath breath praise the Lord. Praise ye the Lord. That's it. Do it just a little longer and give him praise and glory and honor. I magnify your name. I glorify your name. Lord, we come to this house not desiring just a touch, but we desire a change. <clears throat> Turn your neighbor and tell him they left with a touch. They left with a touch. They left with a change. Rather, they left with a change. They left with a change. God bless you. You may be seated in the name of the Lord. On his last pilgrimage to Jerusalem where Jesus was to die outside the city wall, Jesus passed through the Samaria and Galilee and it was areas he knew so well and in which he had displayed his power and might before many, many times. Normally when the Jews went to Jerusalem, they took the longer route across Jordan in order to avoid the unhospitable land of the Samaritans with whom the Jews had no dealings, but petty differences between people were unrecognized by Jesus who came as the Savior of the world, by Jesus who came as the Redeemer and Healer of the world. The miracle before us has its own peculiarities. Ten lepers bound together in a common misery forgot their national differences. Although one was a Samaritan and the other nine Jews, the Bible says, and we understand and know anything about leprosy, that they were poor outcasts with one common need. They, they needed a touch. They needed an answer to their situation. They needed a healing in their body. They, they needed deliverance. They needed to meet the master. They, they needed to have an encounter with this one named Jesus. They, they needed a remedy to their situation. They, they needed an answer to every situation that they had in their life. They, they needed Jesus to do something 
immediately because their life was turned upside down because of this thing called leprosy. They, they understood and knew that if I could just get to Jesus, I know that everything will be all right because I understand and know that there have been those that had an encounter with him and their life was changed completely. Let me stop right here and say this to the people of God this morning, that if there's ever a day that we need to have an encounter with Almighty God, it is the day and hour that we are living in. Let me stop right here and remind us today that it's not enough just to sit on a pew on a Sunday morning. And it's not enough just to sit on a pew on a Wednesday night. You must have an encounter with Almighty God. Let me break it down for you a little bit this morning. It's not enough just to shake the preacher's hand and, and hug the pastor's neck. and It's not enough just to come to church and sing a few songs. What we got to have in the day and hour we're living in is an encounter with Almighty God. It's not enough just to go through the motions. It is not enough just to raise our hands and dance before the Lord. We, we've got to have an encounter with Almighty God because I will tell you this morning if you want to be made new, have an encounter. If you want to leave in your right mind, have an encounter. If you want a fresh start, have an encounter. If you want restoration in your life, have an encounter. I've heard about him and I've sensed his presence and I've felt his presence, but I know that when I'm in his presence, I need to have an encounter with him and worship him like I've never worshiped him before, and then God will do a work in my life like I've never seen before. How many will understand this morning and declare that every time I come to the house of God, if I praise him, if I love him, if I worship him, I can have an encounter with Almighty God, and I can leave different than when I came. Amen. Amen. We understand and know that in the New Testament times, leprosy was the most dreaded disease. The condition rendered the body massive ulcers and decay. Fingers would curl and gnaw them. Blotches of skin would discolor and stink. And certain types of leprosy would numb nerve endings and leading to loss of fingers, perhaps in toes and ears and even a whole foot and hand. The leprosy was death by inches. The social consequences were as severe as the physical, considered contagious. The leper was quarantined, banished to a leper colony. In scripture, uh, the leper is symbolic of the ultimate outcast, infected by a condition he did not seek and rejected by those he knew and avoided by people he did not know and condemned to a future that he could not bear. They were different. They were of another nationality. The Bible says nine were Jews and one was a Samaritan. However, leprosy made them very common. They may have been of a different pedigree. They may have been of a different nationality. They may have been raised in a different home, but they were looking for the very same answer. They were looking for the very same Jesus. Let me stop right here and remind us today that it doesn't matter whether you're rich or poor, you're looking for the very same answer. It doesn't matter whether you're educated or uneducated, you're looking for the very same answer. It doesn't matter whether you're sick or well, you are looking for the very same answer. It doesn't matter whether you're young or old, you're looking for the very same answer. It doesn't matter if you've been a Christian and full of the Holy Ghost and baptized in Jesus' name for 55 years, or you're a sinner in the back alley in Charleston, West Virginia somewhere, you're looking for the same answer. Let me remind you that the answer is not in fame or fortune, it is in Jesus. The answer is not in houses or lands, it is in Jesus. Let me stop right here and say this, the answer is not in how much medication you take. Well, I'm going to preach it whether you want me to or not. The answer is not necessarily in how much medication you take. The answer is in this one named Jesus. The answer is not in all your degrees and what kind of parties you go to and the pleasures of this world. The answer is in Jesus. If I can just find Jesus, I'll have my answer and my cure. He's the answer to my situation. He's the answer to my problem. He's the answer to my depression. He's the answer to my pain and torment. He's the the answer. I wish I had somebody to help me this morning uh, and declare I understand and know who he is. Uh, I understand and know there was a day uh, that I needed an answer and Jesus uh, helped me uh, and Jesus delivered me. Oh, if you're thankful, clap your hands and give him praise. I know, I know, I know that if I can get to Jesus, everything's going to be all right. If I can get to Jesus in just a moment, he can change my life. Shout amen. We find in the Word of God that leprosy is symbolic of sin. Everyone shouts sin. Therefore, we can come to the conclusion that sin is the great leveler of all. 
For it says in Romans chapter 3 and verse 23, For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. The Bible emphatically declares that every human being has sinned. It makes no difference where you're from. It doesn't matter your name. It doesn't matter your status. We are all contaminated by sin. For Paul says there is none righteous, no, not one. Our righteousness has become as filthy rags. In Romans chapter 3 and verse 12, the Bible says that they are all gone out of the way. They are all together become unprofitable. This word in Hebrew means to become putrid or rotten or decayed and have become offensive, like fruit that is spoiled. In Arabic, it is applied to milk that becomes sour. And applied to moral subject, it means to become corrupt and useless and contaminated and affected and impure and sickening, a sickening rather of no value. Every single human being, past or present, young or old, has been affected by sin, has been diagnosed with leprosy, if you please, infected by a condition that we did not seek after and condemned to a future that we cannot bear. I'm reminded of the story of the church officer who came to talk to the pastor one day about sin. He said to the minister, we of the congregation wish you wouldn't talk quite so much or so plainly about sin. We feel that if our boys and girls hear you discuss this subject so much, they will all the more easily become sinners. Why, pastor, why, preacher, don't you just call it a mistake? Or say that our young people are often guilty of using poor judgment, but please, don't talk so openly about sin. The pastor walked over and took down a bottle of poison from a high shelf and showed it to his member. And the bottle was plainly marked in big red letters, poison, do not touch. The pastor then asked the question, what would you have me to do? Do you feel it would be wise for me to remove this label and put on one that reads essence of peppermint? Don't you see that the milder you make the label, the more dangerous you make the poison, he said. Mm, I feel the Holy Ghost right now. Let me tell you today that sin, plain, old-fashioned sin, the self-same sin which caused Adam's downfall is what we are all suffering from today. And it'll do us more harm than good to try and dress it up with a fancy, more attractive label to try to forget what is really in the bottle. That's why God describes sin as leprosy. He is trying, oh my God, I feel the Holy Ghost, to get our attention to wake us up and realize that we are nothing but walking dead men and that we are dying at death by inches and he's crying unclean, unclean. Let me tell you today that no matter how much we pop popularize it and no matter how much we glamorize it and no matter what label we put on it we are all bound by leprosy we are all confined by leprosy we are all banished we are quarantined we are condemned to a future that we cannot bear but thank God that's not the end of the story for the Bible says where sin doth abound grace does much more abound I'm glad to tell you that is not the end of the story for the Bible says for the wages of sin is death but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Aren't you thankful you can say, I once was blind, but now I see. Aren't you thankful you can say, I once was lost, but now I'm found. It's all because I've had an encounter with the Lord Jesus Christ. Oh, if you're thankful, you ought to clap your hands right now. You ought to clap your hands as loud as you can clap them right now and understand when Jesus found me, he didn't leave me the same way he found me. Some of you were alcoholics. Some of you were drug addicts. Some of you were immoral from the top of your head to the sole of your feet. But when you came into an apostolic church, when you came into the presence of God, there was a God that says, let me touch you. Let me change you. Let me bring you out. Hey, let me, let me, let me tell you today, if it's been a long time since you've shouted, if it's been a long time since you've ran the aisles, if it's been a long time since you've spoken with other tongues, if it's been a long time since you've felt the joy of the Holy Ghost, if it's been a long time since you've been excited about living for God, you don't need more church. I'm surprising you right now. You don't need more church because we can church ourselves to death and not have an encounter with God. You don't need more singing. Ha. 
You really don't need more preaching. You hear preaching all you have some of the best preaching you'll ever hear coming across this pulpit. You don't need more preaching. You don't need more fellowship meetings and pizza parties. What you need is a good old-fashioned Holy Ghost encounter with the Lord Jesus Christ of the change in kind. Just preaching isn't going to do it. Just singing isn't going to do it. Just shaking the pastor's hand isn't going to do it. You're going to have to get to the place where you say, God, I've got to have an encounter. I've got to have a change in my life. Well, if you believe that, clap your hands right now and give God praise and magnify the Lord with me. Magnify the Lord with me and declare, Jesus, Master, have mercy on me. Oh, I feel the Holy Ghost. I'm hurrying along. These ten lepers could have gotten the attitude, I've been this way so long. I'm just going to live with it. Huh. That's where a lot of people make a mistake. I've been this way so long, so let's just live with it. You don't have to live that way. I've been hooked on drugs for so long, I just got to live it because maybe this is what I'm meant to do. You don't have to live that way. I've been battling alcohol for so long in my life, maybe I just got to live this way. And every day of my life, I got to drink a little. You don't have to live that way. I declare under the anointing of the Holy Ghost and by the power of God, you can come out in Jesus' name. You can be changed and delivered through the power of the name of Jesus. You don't have to live that way. Oh, they could have had the attitude, I can hardly speak and I can only get so far and I'm contaminated, I'm ugly and I'm of no value. I'm rotten and I'm useless. I've already lost this and I've already lost that. What's the use? You know what? They didn't care of what, what has happened. They didn't care of what they've been. The, the only thing that they had a mindset of was just to get to Jesus. However bleak it may have seemed, however bad it may have looked, how far you think you are, how rotten you may smell, I've got good news for you today. We have hope. I've got good news for you this morning. We have a way of an escape, and we have an answer, and we have deliverance, and we have a reason to cry out because we have a God that can touch us in a moment's time. All it takes is just a moment. Turn to your neighbor and tell him all it takes is just a moment. Tell him all it takes is just a moment. Let me hurry. The attitude. And the treatment of the compassion healer are impressive. The Bible says that when Jesus saw and heard the ten lepers, he simply said, go show yourselves to the priest. The Bible says that as they went, they were cleansed. No healing word was spoken. He said, just go. Yet such was the assurance of the lepers that when the Lord Jesus Christ said, go, the command meant healing, and they immediately went to the priest. Notice that they were obedient to the Lord before the healing happened. He said, go. And the Bible says that as they went, they were healed. For some of you, let me stop right here and slow some things down and just speak to you for just a minute. There's times where God will speak a word to you, and you won't do what God's asked you to do. And then you expect God to perform the miracle that you want him to perform. But God says, you do what you need to do first, and I'll do what I need to do second. The Bible says that as they went, they were cleansed. The Lord Jesus Christ gave them no pledge or outward means of healing. As yet, they felt nothing different in their diseased bodies. But as they went steadily on to gather all their rags and wretchedness and uncleanness in some supernatural way when they yearned for happened. As the lepers went somewhere, somehow on the road, the air they breathed became the vehicle of divine power. Imagine the cry of joy breaking forth from one and another and another as new life shot into their wasted frames. And they felt the wonderful transformation that was taking place in their body. They began to notice the lesions disappearing and the discolorization of the skin subsiding. No doubt they began to recognize the swelling and the numbness that had left their body and then they noticed that the areas affected no doubt by gangrene began to clear up and be restored to its original color. And at that very moment I guarantee you they knew beyond a shadow of a doubt they had an encounter with a man named Jesus and they received a touch from Almighty God. They knew knew they were touched like never before because they saw the effects of that touch. The result of the miracle has its bright yet dark side. Only one, the Bible says, everyone shout one. Only one out of the ten returned to thank the giver for his gift and the stress and the miracle is on the one who returned to give him thanks. 
The language implies that the work of healing was not accomplished till the company was out of sight of the master and that this one leper, as soon as he was healed, he did not continue his journey to the priest, but swung right around to give honor and glory and praise to the great high priest. Vocal powers, no doubt, were restored, for with a loud voice he glorified God and falling down before the Lord Jesus Christ, expressed the gratitude of his heart. And the other nine went on their way to the first priest they could find, and, and they wasn't wasting any time. Uh, thanks, it was great, Jesus. It was magnificent, Lord. I thank you. It was wonderful. I knew you could do it. I, I got what I came for. I, I knew you could touch me. Wow, I never felt a touch like this before. I, I'll never forget the touch of Almighty God, but I'm out of here. I, I've got to find myself a priest and let him know I am clean. Thanks, but no thanks. Perhaps the nine failed to return because they knew the danger of committing themselves to Jesus. Uh, perhaps the nine failed to return having given them new life. He might demand their loyalty. Uh, uh, by the lack of appreciation, they indicated that their benefactor was no longer necessary to them. An urgent uh, want was passed. And they had all they'd asked for. Where were the nine? They were walking away, thankful for the touch they received. Uh, but there was one on his way back to thank the Lord. There was one uh, on his way back to worship the Lord. There was one uh, on his way back to glory the Lord. There was one on his way back to fall at the feet of the Lord Jesus Christ. And so we find in the word of God that when that leper came back, Jesus asked him, were there not ten cleansed, but where are the nine? They are not found that return to give glory to God, save this stranger, this Samaritan. He said to them, arise, go thy way, thy faith hath made thee whole. When I read this scripture, something jumped out at me that I've never really paid much attention to before, and that is the word whole. We find that the nine went away touched. And you could see that they were a leper, but they were cleansed. That's why he said, go show yourself to the priest. They had to get a certification, a documentation that they were cleansed to carry with them because if you just looked at them with fingers missing and, and part of an ear missing and so forth and so on, some would still believe that they had leprosy. So they had to present documentation that they were cleansed. So that's why they had to go show themselves to the priest. But notice when this Samaritan came back to worship the Lord. He did not declare to him, follow and go show yourself to the priest. He said, because thy faith hath made thee whole. There was no reason for him to go show himself. For you see, this leper wasn't only touched, but he was changed. He was changed. I believe that there's some people in this place today, under the sound of my voice, they're not just going to be touched. They're just not going to be cleansed. They're just not going to be set free. But they're going to be changed by the power of Almighty God. I declare to you, under the anointing of the Holy Ghost, God is wanting to change someone today from the top of your head to the sole of your feet. God is wanting to have an encounter with somebody today. God is wanting to transform somebody today. Don't walk away from this place just touched. Walk away from this place changed by the power and the presence of Almighty God. That's the problem with so many. They come to service after service after service and they feel a goosebump. And they feel good. And God touches them. But there's not a change that happens in their life. Musicians come. We find in living for God that the percentages of those that realize they have a situation, a condition, a leprosy problem, that have an encounter with God, all they want is an answer to their problem. A lot of people just want an answer. You know, there's a lot of people that will declare a lot of things to the Lord in the midst of their situation. When they are in a storm, they'll say, God, I will do this, and God, I will do that. And God, I will go here, and God, I will go there. God, if you just do this, I'll get on a plane next week and find myself in Africa somewhere being a missionary. Be careful what you say. We make a lot of declarations to the Lord because we want God to move. God, if you'll do this, I'll never leave the church. God, if you do this, I'll never back. God, if you do this. But then when God does it, we turn and we walk away. Elder Brian, I love when he does, he goes, Peter. There's people in the walk with God that will receive from the Lord and they'll walk away from God saying, thank you, goodbye. You were there when I needed you. You were there when I was in dire straits. 
You were there when I had no hope and no answer. See you. Goodbye. But the miracle truly happens when you realize what is happening in your life and you say, I just got to make my way back to the Lord. And I've just got to worship Him. And I've just got to praise Him. And I've just got to magnify Him. You know what? I truly believe that the leper had no thought in his mind that God was going to do an additional work for him. He just said, you know what? I just got to go give him some praise. He shunned the bowl, said, hey, I'm I just got to lift him up for what he's already done. But the Lord says, I can't help but to perform another miracle in your life. I've come to tell somebody right now in this house, God desires to bring a change in your life. You'll say, Pastor, I, I've been in church before, and Pastor, I've raised my hands before, and God, I, I've sought God before, and I've called on the name of the Lord before. I understand that. But today, God desires to bring a change. A change to my mind, a change to my heart, a change to my spirit. I believe there are some folks in the house of the Lord today that's crying out as everyone stands. I'm tired of my life being just touched. You come to the house of God and there's a word that comes forth and a conviction. And you declare, I'm going to make some changes. But when you leave and get in your car and you go home, you forget that which you declared you would do. What you need is a change. There are some of you that's battling, no doubt, addictions in your life. You come to the house of God and you worship God and you praise God and you feel a touch of God in your life. You feel the strength of God in your life. You feel a moving of God in your life. You feel a cleansing that comes over you, but a week, two weeks, three weeks down the road, some things that get a hold of you again and you battle with it fight it. It attaches itself to your life. What you need is you need an encounter with the Lord like never before and let him bring a change in your life. A change that will make you whole like you've never been before. I want you in the house of the Lord this morning just to lay your hand on the neighbor's shoulder you're standing beside right now. It's time to quit praying, God, move on me and start praying, God, change me. It's time to quit praying, God, touch me and start praying, God, change me. And say, God, I'm going to leave this house changed by the power of God. Lord, I'm coming back to worship and I'm coming back to praise you and I'm coming back to magnify you and I'm coming back to, to glorify your name. And I thank you for what you've done and I thank you for how you've touched my life and I thank you for how you cleanse my life and I thank you for what you've already done. But Lord, I'm just coming back to praise you and I'm just coming back to worship you. I'm just coming back to magnify you. For, Lord, I know that there's something that you can do in my life. Uh, I know, that God, you can perform another miracle in my life. And I know there's a greater dimension that can rest upon me right now that will bring about a change like I've never seen before. And I'll leave this house whole by the power and the presence of Almighty God. The presence of the Lord is here right now. As they begin to sing, I want you to pray for that neighbor and begin to pray for yourself right now. Say, God, change me. God, change me right now. God, change me right now. God, change me right now. God, I want to walk different. God, I want to talk different. God, I want to live different. God, I want to be different today. I'm tired of coming to the house of the Lord and just feeling a goosebump. God, I'm tired of just coming to the house of the Lord and just feeling a touch in my life. God, I'm tired of struggling with the things that I'm struggling with. God, I'm tired of facing these things every day of my life that seems to bring me down and trip me up. But God, right now, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, I receive a change in my life.
this day. You are awesome in this day. You are awesome in this day. You are that's it. Pray for your neighbor right now. Pray a change would come to the heart. Pray a change would come to the mind. Pray a change would come to the spirit. Come on, let the Lord renew you in the Holy Ghost right now. Let the Lord restore to you the joy of your salvation. Receive from you today in the name of the Lord. And we come to worship you. We've come to magnify and glorify the name of us. In the name of the Lord. That's it. As you pray for that neighbor, I want you to pray in the Holy Ghost right now. As you worship together, I want you to pray in the Holy Ghost right now. I believe a change is coming to some of you right now. You're not going to leave this house just touched up. But there's a change that's coming to your mind. There's a change that's coming to your spirit. There's a change that's coming to your life. Him as they sing. Oh, I know some of you are feeling a touch of God. You feel a change happening in your life right now. You're seeing a change happening in your life.